In this video, we're going to show how to use LIFO to calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory when a company has a periodic inventory system. And bear in mind, LIFO is not allowed under IFRS. Okay? So let's say that we have a series of transactions here for a retail company. Uh, so they buy goods and turn around and sell them at a marked up price. So we've got a series of purchases and then we've got a sale. Now, on January 1st, they purchased 20 units at $35 a unit. Then five days later, they purchased 30 units at $40 a unit. Then on January 8th, they sell 40 units. And then January 13th, they purchase another 25 units at $50 a unit. Now, how do we calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory from this information? That's what we're going to use LIFO to figure out. Remember that LIFO means last in, first out. So that means the last purchases are going to be the ones that are first the cost of goods sold. Here's the catch though. Because we're using a periodic inventory system, when we make the sale, for example, on January 8th, we don't say, okay, let's go to the most recent purchases as of January 8th. We don't affect the inventory account at all on January 8th. We wait till the end of the period. And let's just say the end of the period happens to be January 15th or something like that. So at some point it's after here. There's no other transactions. Okay, so this here, there's nothing else. And then so we have the, the period end. We have to go and calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory. So as of at this point in time, we say, okay, what is the most recent purchases? Those are gonna be the ones that go to cost of goods sold first, okay? Because we've got 40 units. So we're gonna have this 25, and then 40 is still, we still need 15. So we're going to have 15 come out of this. So cost of goods sold is going to be 25 at $50 a unit and 15 at $40 a unit. Under LIFO with the periodic method, that's going to be the cost of goods sold. So again, we have the last 25 units at $50 a unit. And then we had the 15 from January 6th at $40 a unit. If we add that together, that's $1,850 is the cost of goods sold. Now, if we look at the ending inventory, the ending inventory now is, is basically the opposite because the first purchases are going to be the ones that are still in the ending inventory because they haven't flowed through cost of goods sold yet. So we have 20 at $35 a unit, and then we have the remaining 15. If we took 15 out and went to cost of goods sold, that means there's 15 left that are going to be an ending inventory at $40 a piece. So that leads to $1,300 in ending inventory. This would all be different if we were using the perpetual inventory system because then we would go and say, okay, as of this point in time where we sell the 40 units, now let's look back to the most recent purchases. But because we're using the periodic method, we say, okay, we're going to wait till the end of the period, which in this case is, is right here. We're going to wait to the end of the period. And then as of that point in time, we look to the most recent purchases. Now, as a caveat, so let's say that, it, that, so we've done all this and then the company does a physical count. They actually go and count the inventory at the end of the period. And they say, well, look, we, we've done a count and we only have $1,220 of inventory. Uh, so our ending inventory is overstated clearly because maybe there was some some theft of some inventory or something was lost or damaged whatever the case our inventory is overstated so if we do a physical count and we see that then we need to make an adjustment we need to make an adjustment so what we're going to do is we're going to say okay ending inventory clearly should be be $1220 okay because it's it's been overstated because we didn't recognize there was this the, you know we lost some some merchandise and so then the, we're going to add that the extra $80, that difference between $1,300 and $1,220. We're going to add that to cost of goods sold. So in that case, instead of $1,850, cost of goods sold would be $1,930. Again, this is assuming that we did a physical count and it showed a different amount for the inventory than what we would have calculated from our transactions above. 